Ah, The Truman Show. It's hilarious and quirky, yet still weaves in a complex allegory for our own spiritual journey and search for the truth. It's a movie that chronicles the story of a man who wakes up to the truth of his reality, a reality of illusions. There's a powerful quote in the beginning that describes it really well, and one that carries over nicely to our own reality and daily lives. Nothing is fake, but everything is controlled. Why? Because we only accept the reality of the world that we're presented with. On the surface, the film appears to be about the journey towards truth. And while this does ring true, Under the Surface is a movie about so much more, with tremendous implications for us today. And just to get it out of the way, for those who haven't seen it, and don't mind the spoiler, The Truman Show is a story about a man who was born and raised in a TV set, the actual set of which is really the size of a small town. Everyone he knows, his family, his friends, and even his wife are all actors. Truman is an unwitting guinea pig manipulated by a television conglomerate and used for the world's entertainment. The cherry on top here lands with his name itself. He is true man. Literally the only person in his reality that's true, real, or authentic. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever felt like you were living in a Truman show in some way? The reason I ask is because in most people's lives, at some point, we seem to question the authenticity of our reality. It's not an uncommon thing, though sometimes it can be blown up to extremes. After this film came out, a psychological disorder was coined called the Truman Show Delusion, in which a person comes to believe that they are at the center of attention for millions or billions of people around the world. Now, of course, that probably seems ridiculous to even conceive of such a thing, but in a way, we may actually all be living out some kind of Truman Show ourselves. Let's break this down. From a spiritual perspective, a lot of us can relate to Truman's awakening. While we may not live in a movie set, or maybe that's just what our producers want us to think, the overwhelming bulk of our mainstream reality is filtered and presented to us by people with agendas, especially the mass media who sensationalize specific stories to keep our focus and attention. This is depicted very clearly in the Truman Show. Everything is controlled, and there is deep indoctrination at every level, especially encouraging him to not want to leave his hometown. The radio guy, people on TV, even his school teacher in a flashback, all messing with his mind, convincing him to stay where he is and surrender to the life that he has. I like to be an explorer, like the great Magellan. Oh, well, you're too late. There's really nothing left to explore. It gets to the point that it's almost purposefully comical, like the picture in the travel agency can you imagine if a real travel agency hung that up? I mean, how would they even stay in business? The scary part is, this is also the world we live in. Every advertisement is trying to sell you something, even if it's just selling you on an idea or a way of thinking. News is the same thing, and so on and so forth. Basically every media everywhere. Heck, I can't even escape it. Spirit Science itself is a channel with a message, but I will be completely upfront and transparent with you our intention is the evolution of consciousness, period. Now, oftentimes a spiritual awakening doesn't come all at once. It's not like one moment you're meditating and then suddenly there's a flash of light and you transform into a Taoist sage. Although that would be pretty cool. No, spiritual awakenings are often the result of loads of little weird coincidences that steer you in the general direction of a powerful waking up, aha, or getting it moment. And many times like Truman, once we experience one glitch in the matrix, we'll keep experiencing more, oftentimes even stronger until we answer that inner calling to something greater and try to flee our hometowns to Atlanta until we're taken down by guys in hazmat suits. On that subject, there seems to be this theory online that the production team of The Truman Show actually just represents the ego. Now think about it. One of the main pitfalls of the ego is that it relies and thrives in comfortability and it will do anything to remain and keep you there. It can even mess with your head and you can convince yourself that seemingly miraculous events have simple mundane reasons and nothing of interest there to go and explore deeper. The production team in Truman's life follows him around every step of the way and rearranges the set to keep him believing the lie. Every time he thinks he sees something out of the ordinary, they're there to fix the glitch almost immediately and make him think that he's going crazy until he literally does. And this is where things get deeper. Remember that scene where he locks his wife in the car with him and drives around in circles for a while and then careens off to try and leave the state? Like, no question, he really loses his marbles here for a bit, behaving like a nut job. <laughs> Truman, where are we going? I don't really know. I guess I'm being spontaneous. Oh. <laughs> Somebody help me! I'm being spontaneous! 
<laughs> but then you look out into the world and how much anxiety is there? Depression, manic behavior, schizophrenia, and other mental disorders. And we wonder why? No, it's not necessarily because there's cameras in everyone's face, although there sort of is, and we're gonna get to that soon. But suffice to say, our environment is a huge factor of this. And we as a species are living a rather inauthentic life. And this inauthenticity and mass indoctrination from media, poor conscious education, and reckless social programming absolutely can mess us up in mass. And I mean, have you ever had a moment where you're talking about something with a friend, not Googling it or even on a video call, and the next thing you know, you're seeing ads for that very thing popping up online? Seriously, it's a little weird, and it's happening to a lot of people right now. So let's face it, for most of us, our phones and our Alexas or HomePods or whatnot are always listening. So yeah, mass indoctrination. Plus, not to get too deep into Edward Snowden, but mass surveillance is also a very real thing. Maybe we are all participating in a big old Truman show. Now, regarding the case of the show, they really have to do this to Truman because he's the star and they need the show to keep going. But for us, our egos keep us asleep and unquestioning of the truth because it knows that once we awaken to the true nature of ourselves, we might be able to transcend our ego and leave it behind. Naturally, our egos are afraid of ego deaths. In other words, in order to walk the path of awakening, fears and mental bonds need to be overcome. Now, a couple of very interesting things here. On the one hand, yes, we can see the mass indoctrination that happens to Truman to sustain the show. On the other hand, I think it's also important to look at the creator's intention. Kristoff, who in a way basically plays God, clearly loves and cares for Truman. Yes, he's like the patriarchal overlord version of God from the Old Testament, but we see these scenes of him watching Truman as he sleeps, as if he really is like his child. It's not like he just entirely made the show to sell the brand new Makoko drink, all natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua, no artificial sweeteners. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> But no, you know, we see Kristoff's passion for his work and show with the reunion with Truman's father in which he orchestrates a beautiful moment both for Truman and viewers simultaneously that literally brings everyone to tears. It just goes to show, I guess, that passionate, creative, artistic, and wildly insane all go hand in hand. In a way, it's almost courageous to try and make a show like this. And at the same time, I'm surprised it didn't get shut down from the outset for infringing on human rights laws. Maybe all the lawmakers just really enjoy the show. However, the problem with Kristoff also lies where his brilliance does, in his thinking. At one point, he describes that he's given Truman the opportunity to live a normal life. I have given Truman the chance to lead a normal life. Certainly, it is an ordinary life, but it's not an extraordinary one. In fact, it's super boring. It's so boring that at one point, Truman's best friend glorifies him for having a desk job. But something within Truman longs for something bigger, something more, freedom. And this calls on all of us to really ask ourselves, what is a normal life? Are we living one? Are we happy with how things are? Or do we want something more? If the answer is yes, you're in the right place. Keep watching. Ooh, almost sounded like a product placement, didn't it? Ha, but then it wasn't. So regarding Truman's awakening, one of the underlying messages here seems to be that sometimes, in order to see the truth, we must face our fears. There's actually an old quote about how the treasure you seek lies in the cave you fear to tread, but it's more than just a treasure. Truman shows us that we must come to a full and ultimately truer understanding of the nature of reality. Towards the end of the movie, Truman faces that fear, gets on his boat and searches for that freedom. When the team finds him out on the water, Kristoff turns on all the weather modifiers. He must be a mod for the server or something, but he tries to make Truman turn back in the face of the storm that almost destroys him. It's a time of testing and uncertainty in his spiritual journey, but like our own, it is a necessary rite of passage, a dark night of the soul, you know? That weird period on your journey where everything you used to know, the entirety of your old life just falls apart around you and you're forced to make that life-changing decision of whether to go back to the safety of a normal life or continue down the spiritual path. Truman takes the red pill and nearly is killed in the process by his own maker. But it's here that he makes the choice to surrender his old life fully. Is that the best you can do? What a legend. 
It's no coincidence that shortly after the storm clears and he's back on his feet, that he hits the side of the massive dome stage and reaches the limits of his current reality. Unlike the song, however, he didn't buy his stairway to heaven. He completely earned it. Whether he's winding down the road with a shadow taller than his soul or not, it's the gateway or stairway to higher realms of thought. It's the gateway beyond the dream of our illusory life and identity. The gateway beyond the life Truman has always known and even beyond Truman himself. By walking up those stairs, he transcends his normal identity and moves on out into the real world or the next layer of a multidimensional illusory holographic reality matrix. One of the two. I think at its heart, the Truman Show poses the question we've all asked at some point. Is our reality real? And like the matrix is a modern take on that rather old premise posed by Plato with his allegory of the cave. Also Descartes' evil demon, and more recently, Hilary Putnam's brain in a vat. How much of our reality is given to us or generated just so that we accept it? Right before Truman steps through that gateway out of the dome, he's confronted with the voice of Kristoff, who sounding like God, tries one last time to lure him back in with the promise of safety and comfortability. He demonstrates how he's been manipulating Truman in real time. You're afraid, that's why you can't leave. Which translated into normal English also means, I've been scaring you and that's why you're trapped. As long as we live in fear, the fears themselves limit us from experiencing more. As we experience this moment within us, we are invited to ask ourselves the same questions every day. Do we stay limited or do we choose the great unknown, embrace whatever is to come and merge with reality as it truly is, just as Truman does? At the end of the day, that choice is each of ours to make. Will you stay where you are and continue your life as normal? Or will you take the plunge and climb your own stairway to heaven? And if you're truly feeling that calling inside, how about trying out the Spirit Science Starter Kit? All natural free downloads from the upper slopes of Mount Spirit Mysteries, authentic wisdom only. <laughs> oh my, could you imagine? No, but seriously, it's a great download. Click the link below to get it today. And in case you don't watch another Spirit Science right after this, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>